الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون Beloved brothers and sisters it is important for us to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this beautiful month of Ramadan is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. It is for us in order to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We become conscious of the poor from amongst us. We become conscious of those who are unhealthy from amongst us. And we reach out to them in various ways. Similarly, we become conscious of the bad habits that we may have. And we seize the opportunity to eradicate these bad habits. As you know, the month of Ramadan is passing so quickly that we have very few days left. Seize the opportunity of the rest of this month in order not to be from amongst those who have lost. This afternoon, I'd like to share with you a beautiful narration of a great companion of, Allah, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the name of Abdullah ibn Salam radiyallahu anhu. He says, when I first met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may peace be upon him, the first words that I heard from his blessed mouth, the words were, Ayyuhan nas, O people, Afshu salama, spread the salam. And the meaning of the term salam is something that is very deep in Islam. We start off by calling it a greeting, Assalamu alaikum, which would mean, I would need to spread the greeting of peace to start with. We need to greet one another correctly, my brothers and sisters. It is not only an act of worship, but it is a prayer for one another. I am saying, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you and His mercy. This is the meaning of the term, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, if we are to greet each other, those whom we know, as well as those whom we not know, with the correct intention, then inshallah we would be promoting peace because we would be praying for one another and becoming conscious of the fact that we should not be harming one another. If I have sought a prayer of peace for you, I should be the furthest person away from harming you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be able to help one another. Ameen. So, as-salam also refers to ensuring peace. Which would mean, I need to make sure that I am not the reason why others are struggling and suffering. It might not be possible for me to reach out to everyone who is struggling and suffering across the globe, except through prayer. But what I can do is ensure that they are not suffering and struggling because of me. And this is something that a Muslim should look into. Sometimes we live with family members. These family members are made to endure great hardship and difficulty that we have caused upon them. This is why make life easy for those you are living with, your spouses, your children, your relatives, your in-laws, and so on. May Allah help us to promote peace. Similarly, the term as-salam refers to the fact that wherever we have a sense of security and peace and stability, we as Muslims should ensure that we preserve it. We make sure we do nothing that will undermine the peace, security and stability of our nation or any other nation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to promote peace. And at the same time, we need to understand and realize that all this has been encapsulated in one greeting and that is the greeting of peace. What a great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah says, وَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا 
when you are greeted with a greeting, then respond in a better way or at least in a similar way. This would mean if someone was to tell you, may peace be upon you, the correct way of responding would be, say, would be to say to them, and may peace be upon you and the blessings and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we've added to them, wa alaykumus salam, but we did not stop there. We said, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah make it easy for us. The second part of this narration of this great companion known as Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu an, he says, after he said, afshu salam, he said, wa at'imu ta'am. At'imu ta'am means, and feed the food. So what is meant by feeding the food? Number one, to reach out to those who do not have as much as us in terms of food and drink and various other facilities of this world. Subhanallah. Some people do not have homes. Some people do not have clothes. Some people are struggling in various ways. Reach out to them. More so by feeding. We feed people just like we are all keen to look after our own bellies. It is about time we thought about those who do not have even whatever we have. Even if we have a little, some people don't even have that little. They go days on end without food. And one of the lessons of Ramadan is to be able to reach out to those who do not have food at all or who have very little. Because with us, we have it, alhamdulillah. We stay away from it in order to be able to learn many lessons. One of these lessons is what about those who stay hungry, not because they are fasting, but because they have nothing to fill that belly with. May Allah help us to reach out to them. At'imu ta'am would also mean to feed those who might have food, but on a social basis, you invite people for a meal, relatives and others in order to enjoy what Allah has blessed you with together. And in order to be able to reach out in a brotherly fashion to people, just like we give gifts to one another, not to say we need it, but we reach out to people, we might give a gift because the Prophet ﷺ has taught us that it would result in the betterment of society and perhaps even the love to be enhanced between us. So this is why to reach out to our relatives, family members, to be able to eat and to be able to eat together as a family is something that is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the second part of this beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bear in mind my brothers and sisters that we are in the month of generosity. The month of Ramadan is known also as the month of generosity based on the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous of people and he was most generous in Ramadan when Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to him, the angel, and they used to study the Quran, whatever was revealed up to that point, they would actually study it, the order was given and so on. And this is how we have the Quran today. So from that, bear in mind this month of Ramadan, do not let it pass without generosity having been made manifest in your own life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be generous. Bearing in mind that in this month of Ramadan, the good that you do is multiplied. It is multiplied. The reward is definitely multiplied. Double, triple, 10 times, 70 times, up to 700 times and even beyond. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like it would be not equal for a person to sin in the house of Allah or to sin outside the house of Allah. They are both a sin, but the one who sins in the house of Allah will earn a greater sin because he has come into a place that is considered more sacred to commit his sin. Similarly, a person who commits a sin in the month of Ramadan would be considered one who has blasphemed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much more or he has wronged himself in a bigger way. And this is why to do good in the month of Ramadan is also multiplied. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to abstain from bad at all times. And may he help us to be from amongst those who can do good. The third part of the hadith, Wasilul Arhama. This is what Abdullah ibn Salam says. I heard him say, spread salam, feed the food, and maintain your family relations. Al-Arham, referring to your relatives. So 
every single family as it extends and grows there will be a few misunderstandings that have to occur as the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to test us once again to see how do we carry ourselves when people have problems amongst themselves so number one I should not be the root of the problem number two when there is a problem I should be a person who tries to mend that and who tries to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through obeying his instruction of solving problems, especially when it comes to family matters. Brothers and sisters, the devil, the devil is an enemy who tries his best to break relations between brothers, sisters, father and child, husband and wife. He receives a great token and reward in order or if he has destroyed a relation between husband and wife he's very happy but it's our duty to ensure that we go the extra mile leave no stone unturned to solve a matter this is why muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says a maintainer of good family relations is not he who has a tit for tat relationship, which means you give me a gift, I give you a gift. You visit my home, I visit your home. That is not the maintainer of true family relations. But the maintainer of true family relations is he or she who goes out of his way or her way to solve a problem when it has been created, to mend the relation when it has been broken. So I call on you to use the opportunity of this blessed month of Ramadan to mend broken relations. How many of us have broken relations with our own blood, with our own subhanallah relatives, and we don't want to talk to them for years on end, cease today to sort the matter. Even if it means sometimes to apologize when we know that it was not us who was exactly wrong. But to be honest, if one I am sorry happens to help you solving a problem, so be it. Those three words will go down in history as being your entry into paradise. May Allah grant it to us. Yes, when someone has wronged you, you are, you are allowed, obviously, to ask for justice. It does not mean that someone has usurped your wealth. So now you go to them and say, I am sorry, when they have stolen your wealth? No, but if they have stolen your wealth, there are ways of getting it back. And there are ways of looking at it. Sometimes if it is negligible, we could perhaps overlook it. But if it is something serious and great, even when we are seeking our own right, we should do so in a respectful manner, in a way that is constantly focused upon the problem itself and does not expand it into other parts or departments or fronts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and make it easy for us. The fourth part of this beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is the last part of the hadith. Sallu bil wa nasu niyam. Pray at night when all others are asleep. Pray at night when all others are asleep. And this is something unique. We have prescribed upon us, or Allah has prescribed upon us, five daily prayers that are compulsory. That is one thing. We will come to the masjid, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will try to fulfill it in the most correct way. But remember, the winner is he who can develop the link with Allah far stronger than just the five prayers. Far stronger. Look at the quality of your five prayers. Don't just consider the quantity. Sometimes when we consider quantity, we are in a rush and we want to finish up with our prayer. And in that way, sometimes we insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than worship Him. Salah is an act of worship. The word worship is something that should give us the understanding of a privilege and an honor that Allah has allowed us to worship Him. We should take our time in it. The quantity is prescribed. The quality, definitely, we need to make sure is of that level that the quantity will also be accepted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Over and above that at night, when people are asleep, nobody is watching you. It is only a sincere believer who would be able to get up and make his ablution, meaning wash up, and he would be able to pray solely between him and his maker. That is the sign of a true believer. What is it that got you out of your bed when no one was watching you besides your maker? 
It was your maker and your link with your maker. So develop this and continue to do this. Brothers and sisters, a very interesting point. We are in this month of Ramadan and I'm sure we get up early morning to have what is known as the pre-fasting meal, suhoor. At that particular time, it is also the last third of the night. That's what it is. And the last third of the night, the most blessed moments of the 24 hours that we have. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out, Hal min ibn fa'atuba alayhi? Is there anyone seeking forgiveness so that I can forgive him? Is there anyone asking me so that I can give him? Is there anyone turning to me so that I can accept him? And that is the time, the time of what we would term tahajjud, the early morning prayer, which is voluntary. But what I have today is an encouragement for you to realize the power of the time as it is we wake up. Why do we wake up? For our bellies? So that we can quickly have something before the time is up? Is that the case? That should not be the only reason. My brothers and sisters, it's the month of Ramadan. You are awake at the time of the Hajjud anyway, because you are having something to eat before you start fasting for the day. And that is the moment when you should at least call out to Allah. He is asking at that particular time, is there anyone asking me that I can give? So at least say, yes, Allah, I am asking you, grant me. We all have needs and Allah has made us people with needs so that we call out to him. If we had no needs, we would have no link with Allah at all, perhaps. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who call out to him correctly. Similarly, spend a moment or two reading a little bit of prayer whilst the others are still asleep. Get up half an hour before everyone else, 15 minutes before the others and quietly say a few units of prayer and call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find a very great change in your life. Brothers and sisters, we suffer sometimes. We are depressed. We are sad. Sometimes we have anxiety attacks. Sometimes we have a lack of contentment in our lives. Where to find the solution for this? Can I tell you the best time is at that time of the night when everyone is asleep, you get up and you cry to your maker and you will find a very big change in your life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us at least to seize the opportunity in Ramadan so that we taste the sweetness of it and keep it alive even after Ramadan. So these four aspects, if we go through them, we will understand at the end of the hadith, Muhammad sallallahu says, whoever does these four things will be able to enter the paradise the paradise of their Lord very easily at peace and calm without any hindrance, they will enter paradise. So what are these four qualities? Spreading the peace. We called about, we call it as salam, afshu salam, spreading the peace and feeding. And the third one is maintaining relations. And the fourth one is developing the link with your maker by praying at night when all are asleep. This would mean over and above that which is compulsory. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us and may he make it easy for us. What a blessed month of Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, we spare a moment to pray for those who have lost their lives in the disaster that we have heard about today with the airline that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested us with and those who have lost their lives and this nation, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really to protect us all as a nation. And we ask Allah to protect us as an ummah and to protect humanity at large, to grant us guidance to the right path and to grant goodness to those who have lost their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina fa astaghfiruh innahu jawadun kareem.